You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Are you a boxing boxing fan? fan. Check out out Ring Kings Kings Boxing boxing only on the PRO PRO Media Media Network. What's up, boxing world? What's going on? You're now listening to Ring Kings Boxing on the PRO Media Network. I'm your host, Big Q. We have an excellent podcast to you coming from Ring King, one of the toughest boxing podcasts in the land, man. Episode 356 on Ring King Boxing. We'd like to bring in our boxing expert and contributor on the line, Eddie Two Mean Johnson. What's going on, Eddie? Yo, yeah, what's good, man? Today, bro, we're going to be talking about some boxing, man, in the major capacity like we always do. But this episode will be covering the Canelo Alvarez and Danny Jacobs matchup coming up this weekend. A really big fight going down in a major way. We'll cover that. And we also have some heavyweight news we're going to cover to you today with our excellent analysis on the upcoming matchups. We've got some news about the AJ and versus whoever fight will tell you who he's matching up against. Now, thoughts. And of course, we can't talk heavyweights without talking about Deontay Wilder, the American heavyweight champion, who's taking a very interesting move in who he's choosing to fight. We also play a little Eddie Hearn. A lot of people don't like Eddie Hearn. Uh, You know, a lot of contrary views on Eddie Hearn. But then again, a lot of different views on uh, Deontay Wilder's people, Shelly Finkel, Lou DeBell, and the rest of them. None of these guys are pristine, if you know what I mean. But we're going to talk about that day in Rain King's Boxing Episode 356. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Eddie, man, Canelo Alvarez and Danny Jacobs, man, they're going to match up. And it's going down, bro. It's going to be interesting. Now, this is one of the biggest matchups of 2019. Uh, it's a unified middleweight champion, Canelo Alvarez. He'll put his trio of 160-pound titles on the line when he squares off against the IBF champion, Danny Jacobs. Now, the two have been on a collision course for a while, and Alvarez has come over that big win <clears throat> in which he, you know, knocked off Rocky Feldon. And we called that, Eddie, we looked at Rocky Feldon and, and, and said that Canelo Alvarez will, was going to punish this dude's midsection. That's exactly what he did. He took him down, took that the size didn't mean a damn thing <clears throat> against Rocky Feldon. He took him down. Uh, but Danny Jacobs is definitely a step up in, <laughs> in class versus a Rocky Feldon. Let me tell you something. And this will be interesting, man. And, and w- you know, like I told you, when me and Eddie talk, man, we really kind of let it be known, man, about these two. A lot of trash talking going on between the both of them. But Elvarez, uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez is 51 and 2, 35 knockout, 28 years old. Danny Jacobs coming in at 35 and 2 with 29 knockouts. And he's 32 years of age out of Brooklyn, New York. And they're meeting up on Cinco de Mayo weekend, which is pretty much what how Canelo Alvarez like doing it. So, Eddie, I laid, out, laid it out, man, records and all. Uh, this is a major fight, man. Probably one of the biggest fights in terms of serious competition. Canelo and Danny Jacobs. This is a really solid fight, man. Who do you have in this one and why? Yeah, I think um, it's like a, it's like a 50-50 fight. And um, whoever imposes their will takes control of the fight, maintains control of the fight, and don't win it. That can go either way. You know what I'm saying? Jason, Jacobs can do it, and Canelo can do it. But like to say, who, who, it depends on who um, imposes their will first and maintains it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for instance, the first round, and uh, Jacobs go up there and go out there and start landing some some good combinations on him. 
he that right there says that he already established control of the fight. And he just got to maintain that. But if Canelo come out there and start landing those vicious body shots, and you know what I'm saying, and Danny don't have no answer, then you know what I'm saying it's gonna go for uh, Canelo. I say who, whoever opposed, they will first, man. Yeah, sure, man. I'm looking at it the way you know. I I agree with you on that, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we we talked about Danny Jacobs, man, and I always said to myself about him, I was like, Danny Jacobs is a terrific fighter. You know, he has power, he has speed, he's intelligent in the ring, but something's missing. You know, he's something missing. I always felt that way about Danny Jacobs, something missing, and and. and and, and and whatever that something is, it's the thing that's keeping him from being mentioned in the top class, the top three of his class. And I'm just wondering in my mind, you know, if he could put it all together, because this is like like we said, he's 32 years old. This is going to be a major fight in T-Mobile Arena out in Las Vegas. So everybody I know people, some people know about Danny Jacobs, but Canelo is putting him out there in front of where the, he's one, hands down. Canelo ever is probably one of the most famous boxers in the world. You got guys like Pacquiao, that name Mayweather, but right now, as far as today, right now, Canelo Alvarez with all the belts is probably one of the most popular fighters in the world. And Danny Jacobs is lining up against him. So a lot of people are going to be able to see what he has to offer. He definitely has to bring it, man, in this fight. I just don't know. It's, I agree with you. It's a 50-50 proposition. But for some reason, I got to go with Canelo on this one, man. Uh, I like Danny, but I don't know. I just, you know, something's, you know, pick me. It could be an upset. But I'm in my mind, if I had to put money on it, I'm going with Canelo Alvarez. I just think Canelo's power will be a little bit too much for Danny to overcome in this fight, man. Who do you, who do you got, Eddie? I know you said it's 50-50 proposition, whoever comes out. But who would? Gut from your gut instinctually wise, what you think who you know who'll get this fight? Um my mind saying um Canelo, but my heart <laughs> wanted Jacob to win. I said he has a whole lot to uh I mean he has a whole lot to gain from him, so it might bring a whole nother beast out of him. So I mean I, I would like for him to win it, but my mind saying Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Because he's younger, more hungry. You know what I'm saying? He's more hungry. And he's been in that big stage before. So he used to, um, these big, sometimes people can freeze up, man. A lot of fighters can freeze up, when, especially when they see the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Because there's going to be more people than he ever seen at this fight. And so we'll see. Danny Jacobs is, uh, uh, in one of his quotes, was saying that it's never been my intention and my lead up to any fight to sort this, to create this animosity to sell the fight or to bash my opponent. Never have I ever wanted to do that. It has never been in my nature, and I know that boxing is just a sport. So for me, this has been one of the best promotions and best lead ups that I've ever been a part of because I share the same ideas with my opponent, which is strictly being professional and let our skills speak inside of the ring. That's a quote from Danny Jacobs, man, about all the rigmarole that was going on, the fights and all the antics leading up to the fight and uh, kind of a diplomatic response as, you know, coming into the fight, I guess, or whatever else. But it's strictly all business. Like I said, man, uh, Canelo Alvarez, man, the only fighter that ever had anything to give him, you know, that beat him was, of course, the almighty an excellent greatest fighter and probably in boxing history, Mayweather, who basically took him apart. He couldn't lay a glove on him. But, man, Danny, Danny Jacobs is a far cry from Mayweather, and I just don't know, man. If he if he's standing toe-to-toe with Canelo Alvarez, Canelo is going to put some pain on him, and I don't know if Danny could return the favor. That's all I'm saying. So I'm uh, it's, it's a close one in terms, but something telling me that as this fight goes on, it's going to be a good fight. But something tell me this is going to be like one of those fights where it'll end like in a seven round, eight round with a with a stoppage because of Canelo and the Red El Elvarez just pounding the crap out of Danny Jacobs. That's that's my call on the fight, man. Y'all might disagree with me. Y'all chime in on Ring Kings Boxing. Comment in the comment section. Let us know who you guys have or who you think will win this fight. Do you agree with me and Eddie on the matter or or not? You know, chime in. 
anyway, Eddie, let's go on to our next topic, man, uh, on Ring Kings Boxing. Of course, what's interesting, the two heavyweights at the top of the division, man, the kind of movements they are making is really interesting. Now, you have AJ, who has three of the four top belts in the heavyweight division, and AJ had a fight coming up with uh, Jarrell Miller, who was talking all this crap, and Jarrell Miller loaded up with steroids, and of course, he failed three drug tests. The WBA basically suspended his boxing license, wouldn't allow him to fight. What a dummy that guy turned out to be with that one. And he blew a supreme opportunity to fight for the belt against AJ. Out goes Miller, in comes a group of fighters, and ultimately, Hearn and team decide to go with Ruiz. Now, Ruiz is not, Andy Ruiz is not a, uh, some people, even out of Eddie Hearn's mouth, say he's not aesthetically pleasing. Meaning, I mean, he looks like the Michigan tire logo, man. You, have you ever seen the Michigan tire logo, man? That's what the hell Andy Ruiz looks like, man. But he could fight. Give it up to Andy Ruiz. He's an excellent fighter. His only loss coming to Joseph Parker, who AJ flattened. I ain't going to say flattened, but Parker fought, scared that whole fight, and that's why he lost that fight. He, he, he should have fought a, a different style of fight. If he was going to bring it, bring it, man. You know, uh, but anyway, that's the only fight that he lost against Joseph Parker. Andy Ruiz can't really move that well, but he can box. He's Mexican, and he's talking about trying to bring the crown home to, to Mexico. It won't happen, baby. Good dream, but it won't happen. AJ is definitely going to flatten this guy. Uh, Eddie, this is the fight that they're going to give to us uh, on June the 1st. What do you think about the now AJ versus Andy Ruiz fight? What do you think about that? It's going to be a, a punching bag sex session. That's what that's going to be. He's going to sit up there, especially his body soft, like what I'm looking at. You know, his body soft, man. All, all AJ got to do is go to that body. And so, you know, it'll be over within five rounds, before five rounds. I say, when you soft to the body like that, you start getting nailed up to the body, man. You're not going to last long. You know what I'm saying? Whatever boxing skill you got, it's going to, you're going to slow it down tremendous, man. With body shots, and that's going to be it. His head going to be stationary, and he's going to get his fucking head knocked off on them uppercuts. Vicious uppercut that AJ be throwing. Yeah, the ones that the, the ones that flattened uh, Plavetkin was the one that we called. I remember when he the ones that the one he threw at uh, Doctor Steelhelmer Klitschko that almost took his damn head off, uh, and a couple of bruising, really powerful ones that he used to flatten Alexander Plavetkin. I mean, listen, man, these two dudes, them two Ru- Russian dudes, man, Plavetkin and uh, Klitschko, those guys you don't knock out easy. Let's just put it to you like that. The only two fights that Klitschko lost was against, I mean, excuse me, not Klitschko, uh, Plavetkin lost was against Klitschko and AJ. And AJ put on a boxing exhibi- exhibition against Plavetkin and showed what he's made of. And and it, like me and Eddie say, AJ is the kind of dude, he don't have a specialty punch like Deontay has a right hand. Everything he throws at you hurts. And the Michigan Tire man, Andy Ruiz, will find that to be quite the truth on June the 1st. Very uninspiring person that I would want to see fighting AJ in this in this way, but he couldn't get who everybody wanted him to get, which was Luis Ortiz. Now, we talked about this in the previous podcast about uh, Eddie Hearns coming out saying that once the fight was made, he's going to expose Luis Ortiz's team for what they are. And, of course, we're going to play a little snippet of, of Eddie Hearn talking about the Wilder and Joshua situation is bullshit for the sport of boxing. But before before we get into that, I just want to be able to just, just, just me and Eddie to go over this thing here and talk about it is a bunch of crap because Luis Ortiz had an opportunity to fight AJ last minute. He just beat some bum. He went the distance with some bum about a month ago. And it wasn't a brutal fight. He could he he should be in good condition to get ready for the AJ fight. When it came to him, it was it was almost two months, almost it was inside a month and a half, a uh, month and a half for him to take the fight. He could still been training and take a short notice fight against AJ. But at first, it came down to the management team say, "Hey, uh, the fight is too short on short notice." 
uh, and then it became about the money. Then we get tweets from Luis Ortiz uh, saying that his management team saying that Eddie Hearns is not paying him enough money and yada, 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 and all this kind of offering him enough money. Now, the whole thing about Luis Ortiz being the division underdog is that he's the boogeyman in the division and that he can't get any fights, uh, uh, champion, heavyweight championship fights, which is, I don't know if I can truly believe that. I think that's just some bull crap that a lot of them throwing. Maybe some fighters did duck Luis Ortiz. But he's getting our opportunities to fight right now. People recognize who he is because of that Deontay Wilder fight. He should have won that fight. And he's getting an opportunity to, to, to destroy stuff. But lo and behold, they said they went from the excuses, short term uh, training date was too short to the money is not right. So they pulled the card. But really, Eddie Hearn spoke about it. And he said that the reason, you know, in part, you know, he didn't exactly say the reason why they pulled the fight. But if you can read between the lines, you can see that they had some dealings going on with Deontay Wilder being a guy that was actually looking at trying to arrange fights on the side. Now, before we get into that, let's play what Eddie Hearn had to say about the whole situation. Play a little snippet of an interview Good with Hearn. Yeah, here we go. Now the boxing boys that have given Anthony Joshua a lot of stick over the years. Surely when you hear an interview like that, you have to say to Shelley, like, hold on. We've been backing Deontay Wilder saying he wants the Joshua fight. He wants to be undisputed. Here is a guy that for years and years and years has said one face, one name, one champion. All I want is one heavyweight world champion. All I want is this. And you let a guy come out and say, no, we've got plans. We'll talk about that in a year's time. A year's time. Like, I can't understand. If you're Deontay Wilder, why would you not fight Anthony Joshua for double, treble the money you're making anywhere else? It's there for him. You know, that's like that's like Tevin turning down a fight for three or four times what he's making at the moment to be the undisputed champion. It wouldn't happen. So why is this happening? Don't you think maybe he was saying that to kind of stir the pot because he called no, back... No, I don't. He... Because I, I know he's not. Because I know that Ortiz has already been promised the Wilder fight. I know that Konaki has already been promised the Wilder fight. So we're not just talking about 2020. We might be talking about 2021 when Wilder's available. It's bullshit for the sport of boxing. It really is. And it's annoying because certain people without the brain capacity to understand what is happening presume that Anthony Joshua doesn't want to fight Deontay Wilder. You couldn't be more wrong. You could not be more wrong. This guy will fight anybody. Anybody. And he was ready to fight... Wilder a year ago, and he'll be ready to fight him in two years if he has to. But why can't we make it next? After Ruiz, after Brazil, if we win, why cannot we make that fight next? I don't understand. Do you truly think that Wilder is avoiding the well, fight? Well, then take control of your own career. You know, he talks about, he always says in interviews, you know, oh, these promoters don't let you do this, and you've got to be in control of your own career. If you want the fight, take control of your own career. Have the balls to step up and say, guys, I really appreciate everything you're doing for me, but I want Anthony and Joshua. I want the undisputed fight. Don't let people talk you into, oh, no, have another fight there. That might be, that's good. Make, like, make the fight the fans want to see. We can't make it any more plain and obvious, you know? So whether Shelley's trying to stir the pot, I don't think he is, because I know behind the scenes all these other guys have been offered the shot. You know, when we're speaking to Konaki about taking the, the Joshua fight, no, I'm fighting Wilder. What do you mean you're fighting Wilder? I've been told that fight's done. He's going to fight Ortiz, then he's going to fight me. And we're sitting there like, what? So you want to fight a guy you've already beaten and Adam Konaki before you want to start thinking about the undisputed fight. The biggest fight in boxing, bar none. There's nothing bigger. And how can we have more unity and less division in our sport? Uh, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. You have to crush the egos. Is it all money? Is it all money to it? That's, that's a little bit of Eddie Hearn, man, talking about the Wilder and Joshua situation is bullshit for the sport of boxing. Uh, that comes from... The badlefthook.com, they played that from the Fight Club TV uh, interview. Uh, Eddie, you heard what uh, Eddie Hearn had to say about the whole situation. Of course, uh, that's just one side of the pebble, but uh, what do you think about what he said? It, it, it makes sense for him to, to take that fight after the Brazil fight. I mean, he, for the game, like more money and more belts, you know what I'm saying, which will make 
I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? If he was to win that, there will be even more money on the table. Like like we talked about earlier, you know what I'm saying? All the fights that he got lined up, he'll probably make $10 million for all, all of them. When, if he could uh, beat Joshua, take all the belts, he could make $10 million per fight. Million per fight. I mean, you know what I'm saying? By defending all the titles. Everybody knows that with more titles you got, the more money you can make. You know what I'm saying? Plus, he said it's his goal to, um, to be an undisputed champ. I mean, what, you know what I'm saying? That's the perfect opportunity to fight him. Keep waiting. Keep fighting people that, you know what I'm saying, that you really ain't really ganging nothing off. You know what I'm saying? So, I think people should, fans should, should just um, stop supporting fighters that don't, you know what I'm saying, be bullshitting the public, man. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's bullshitting, you know what I'm saying? Don't support their ass. Simple as that. Stop bullshitting around and, and, and fight the fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, back your words up. You know what I'm saying? That's what the real that's what a real champ do. You know what, me and you had this I get real animated when we talk about this because the heavyweight division is my favorite division besides the welterweights, middleweight division. And to me, man, you know, this is absolutely horse shit, man. This bullshit. And Deontay Wilder and his team need to be ashamed of themselves, man. I don't understand how he can – and it's starting to show me that, you know, I know Eddie Hearns and they, and they have their problems, but AJ over here in America trying to drum up fights. If he really wanted to drum it out, you know, just pull it out – and you know, and just just lay all it out, and just be about money. He could stay over there in England and fight in Wembley and sell it out for eighty to hundred thousand people coming out to watch him fight. He didn't have to come all the way to America, uh, try to get the Jarrell Miller fight and fight Andy Ruiz, which turned out to be a disaster. He tried to get Luis Ortiz, he turned him down. He tried to get this other clown who shouldn't even have a fight, Adam Kanaki, in the deal uh, to try to fight. To me, it's absolutely insane. Uh, Adam Kanaki is nothing compared to him fighting AJ. I don't want to see Kanaki fight. I don't want to see a Wilder Kanaki. I don't want to see. Uh, well, you could see Luis Ortiz and Wilder because it was a good fight. I, I must admit, and and um, Luis Ortiz ran out of juice against him. He should have beat him. But this is this bullshit, man. I don't want to hear bull. I don't want to hear shit. Deontay Wilder got to say. Because he run around here talking about he wants to I try to make the fight, try to make the fight. Then he comes out in interviews and say the only way the fight gets made is a 50-50 split. That won't happen, fool. The man got three belts. Why would he give you a, a fair split on the winnings when he had three earned three belts, three heavyweight belts you have won? That split don't make no sense. You wouldn't do that if you was holding three belts and that man came out to you and said, listen, man, I want to unify the belts. We're going to do a 50-50. You wouldn't give him a 50-50 split. So this is silly, it's stupid. And what it's coming down to is this man is his 30, what, 33 years old? How old is Deontay Wilder? 31, 33? I mean, you, dude, you ain't got that much long. You ain't got that long to fight, man. I mean, yeah, seriously. You ain't got that long to fight. Who told you to go and fight a bum-ass Adam Kanaki and this other and fight the uh, a guy that you already beat? And you none of these guys are holding any titles, man. None of these guys are holding any belts. I mean, none of them. It don't make sense. It's like trying to fight Tyson Fury for the money. You not I can understand a Tyson Fury move because it's a money fight, but fighting Kanaki and going after Luis Ortiz again when Anthony Joshua is like right sitting right there, I don't understand why you clout chasing, dude. I mean, you had 40 fucking fights already. You ain't make your money by now. You need to get out of the game, man. And you know what? It'll be just justice if Luis Ortiz fight him the next time and knock his ass out and take his belt from him. You know, it, that that will be so justice because this is not how you're supposed to do it. And, and you know what? If you don't believe me, go talk to a guy like Lennox Lewis. Ask him, did he ever run away from a, a, a fighter? Ask him if he ever ran away from uh, a heavyweight unification belt. Matter of fact, Lennox was the one that unified the titles. Ask him if he ever ran away from a fighter. The only guy that I would have wanted him to fight that 
the fight that never get made in Lua, and he still speaks about it to this day was the fight with Riddick Bo. That he wished that wouldn't ha that fight that he wishes that fight would have happened. He still talk about it to this very day that he really wanted that fight and it's a shame they didn't make the fight because he said and he was been the the starcher's opponent about these guys, AJ getting together and fighting because he said you don't want to leave it to history to decide on who would have won the fight. You want to have the fight and make it happen. And that's wise words from a wise man, Lennox Lewis. But this is bullshit from Deontay Wilder. This is bullshit, man. You know, don't let these 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 old ass garbage ass promoters and handlers get in the way of the fight, man, because they trying to collect some of they got some personal vendetta between each other. Let them get their old ass in the ring and fight uh, a trainer. To, uh, I mean, promoter to promoter. They angry at each, at each other. But your job is to unify the titles, not fight fighters. That's third, fourth and fifth on the rankings chart. You know, it's just, man, this is absolutely, it's crazy. And as far as Luis Ortiz is concerned, man, Luis Ortiz got a little snippy now with, with Eddie Hearns because they were leveraging, knowing that Deontay Wilder was calling him after after the Dom, Dominic Brazil. Remember, the next fight that Wilder has is not against Luis Ortiz or Kanaki. It's against Dominic Brazil. Now, after he beats Dominic Brazil, because chances are he's going to beat Dominic Brazil, the next fight he wants is Luis Ortiz, a rematch with Luis Ortiz, then followed by Kanaki. That's that's eh, that's absolutely insane. If that's the route, if that's if what Hearns is saying is is absolute true, so they were leveraging back and forth the 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 um, Ortiz team with Hearns telling them, okay, we want to fight for AJ's belts. What's wrong with these guys? Why would you fight? A heavy one heavyweight for, with one belt as opposed to fight the other dude for three belts unless you knew you wasn't going to win that fight. See, that's what I'm talking, the bullshit that I'm talking about. And fights, all these guys claiming to be badasses and walking around and saying they're the baddest man on the planet. But when Hearn approaches Kanaki, when he pro approaches Luis Ortiz, they decide to go to fight Wilder versus fighting a guy with three belts who's a bigger draw. I don't care how you slice it. AJ is a bigger draw than Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's not selling out venues 100,000 plus people, man. He just really made a payday with the Tyson Fury fight. Two fights ago, AJ been getting bank over there, man. So, I mean, what's wrong with these fighters? These guys punch drunk. Or what? Don't these guys know any fucking business? You you fight the guy with the most belts unless you, think you, unless you know you're not going to beat him. What you think about that, Eddie? Yeah, it makes sense, man. Cause I'm like, you know, so they always talk about um, how they just get in this ring. And, you know what I'm saying? Chances are that they might not be able to go back home to their families, or whatever, or be the same after a fight. If I like shit, if that's the case, why not take the? You know what I'm saying? What you can gain the most off? <laughs> that would be a fight with um, Joshua, man, for the most money, and, and you know, like I say, um, to become undisputed champ. I mean, if you're going to put your life on the line, I would, I would rather put it like that instead of just taking these damn bum-ass fights, man. Yeah, this this is insane. Man, taking risks. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, it's some bullshit. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's about my is bullshit. They bullshitting the public, man. Yeah, this, this is absolutely insane, man. This fight, we've been talking about the Deontay Wilder and AJ fight going on. For, it, it's been several years now that they were supposed to make a fight last year, and then they went back and forth about it. Now, all of a sudden, it's it's a thing about he wanting a 50-50 split. You know, we were going to get this guy $50 million. They gave him the money, whatever it was. They drummed it up for $50 million. AJ was bullshitting. Because AJ is not, uh, you know, withdrawing from the bullshit, too. They had their bullshit originally. Hearns had their bullshit originally, too, because they had a plan where they wanted to fight their guys. They weren't interested in fighting Wilder just yet. You know, they were building up and they were making their little cash paydays, too, in the, in the U.K. Then when the time finally the pressure got to him, it, it's because it's A.J. basically plummeled all of the guys that was over there. And he had to eventually fight some guys over here, you know, get over here into the American public so he could really maximize his, his and become a world boxing star is to take hold in the American market. Now, you go over to New York and you're fighting uh, Miller. Miller lets everybody down by 
uh, testing po- uh, positive for steroids and every and every other damn thing out there, and then you have a, a, a terrible decision to go a Ruiz versus man. It's just Luis Ortiz would have been a really solid pickup, whatever the situation being. But obviously, if it if it's any truth to what Hearn was saying about him taking a fight behind Deontay Wilder. Then you have other people turning him down. He really didn't have too many places to go but to go to Ruiz. And and it's sad, man, because no disrespect to Ruiz, but I don't want to see no Ruiz, man. Come on, man. You know, that that's that you know, he's gonna plum he's gonna plumb on Ruiz, man. Pl- Ruiz <clears throat> it, it's it's come on, man. You might be able to box, man, but you it's disrespectful to boxing for you to get in there with a soft stomach with with, with dough with with your midsection looking like uh you know, uncooked dough, man. Come on. We know in, in any really trained fighter know that's the first target they're going to hit on, man. The first target they're going to hit is hit you in that soft doughy gut of yours, man. And and it's it's just ridiculous, man. But it, it won't be quite the same without Miller there, man. Uh, he's just going to flatten Ruiz. It might be interesting the first four or five rounds or so, but ultimately AJ is just going to overwhelm him. And then, like I said, the Lewis Ortiz whole thing, the whole Deontay Wilder thing, it's a bunch of it's just absolutely disappointing that they that they're taking this route. And hopefully these guys can kind of throw all these bum ass fighters off because you no know, hopefully, you know, the fans listen, man, let's not support these dudes, man. Like Eddie said, Eddie called for it, man. Don't support bum ass fighters, man. If it's not the fight that you don't want to see, don't support that guy. If if Deontay Wilder trying to make a payday, go ahead and let him make his payday, but he won't make it off of me. I'm not signing up and I'm not putting no money on Deontay Wilder's people. I'm not putting no money on on AJ and none of these cats until they give us the fights that they want. The promoters don't run jack shit up in here. The people do. We need to remind these fighters and let them know that we run it and we pay for what we want to see. And we don't want to see no Ruiz. We don't want to see AJ and Ruiz. We don't want to see Deontay Wilder and, and um, Luis Ortiz next, maybe later on, but not next. We want to see the champions fighting champions right now. Deontay Wilder is, is in his early 30s. And come on, he we, it ain't like he's super skilled already. Eventually, he's going to start. He he at a peak i don't think he's peaking he i don't i don't think he's gonna get any better than what he is i don't think he probably already sealing out and the only place for him to start is trending down he's not gonna get any better than what he is if you watch his previous fights he don't really box he eventually he throws some jabs and eventually he start looking to knock you out when the later rounds come you know he shows that he had longevity issues which ultimately almost uh, got him knocked out in the Lewis Ortiz fight he did pretty well in the Tyson Fury matchup even though Tyson Fury actually won that fight in my opinion they they actually cheated Tyson Fury so these last two fights showed a lot of flaws in Deontay Wilder's game uh I think the it, it's just sad to me man this whole whole little crappy deal with AJ so let's I'm talking to all the boxing people out there that think this is a load is a load of bull Listen to what my man Eddie Two Mean Johnson just said. He had something brilliant. He just said, among many other things, but he said, "Do not support these fighters when they're not giving you the fights that you want to see. We want to see the 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 unification of the heavyweight division. The first time, last time it was done with Mike Tyson as the American. The last time it was done as a heavyweight was Lennox Lewis. But we do not want to see these bum ass fights." No disrespect to Ruiz, no disrespect to Ortiz, no disrespect to Karnacki. We don't want to see your bum-ass fights. We want to see the two top heavyweights battling for the crown. Don't support these fights, people. Let these Shelly Finkel, let DeBella and all these Hearns and all these other people know that y'all ain't running jack shit here The people do. You know what I'm saying? And let them buy 15 to 16, 18 thousand dollars worth of uh, 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 seats, uh, 18 thousand seat arenas. Let them use their own money to fill it up because they're not going to be using us. But anyway, are there any other uh, thing statements you want to put on the boxing game on what we said before we get out of here? Don't support. No. Um, you know, um, heavyweight punching on a heavy, on a big ass heavy bag, man. Shit, man. Yeah, I agree with you, man. Like I said, man, let, let's start. We start that here right now, people. Do not support AJ's Ruiz fight. We don't want to see that. 
do not support the the second Lewis Ortiz fight with Deontay Wilder. Do not support any fights with the Wilder and Kanaki. You know, let's not support these heavyweights unless they're giving us the fights we want to see. Even, you know, every other division, every other class in the boxing world, they give you the fights. You know, the only other issues that we have, the, the heavyweights are really notoriously bad for this, and the welterweights are really bad for this. But now that we got we, people like Crawford in the game, Errol Spence stepping up, people starting to recognize that they're the two fight, the two best fighters, and that people want to see Crawford and Spence fight and nobody else. You're seeing all these other guys trying to get in there. But the welters have really been solidified with these two guys aiming at each other. And that is the case in the heavyweight division when you have two of the top people, two of the champions, the only two heavyweight champions with the with the major belt sitting at the top of the class and they in the in the whether it's competing networks whether it's competing handlers it don't make a sense I, if you handlers have problems let them get their old wrinkle up ass in the ring and fight it out but when it comes down to the boxing matchups we want to see the top heavyweights fight for the crown so people like two mean say it's gonna call this the two mean campaign and we're not gonna support any bum ass heavyweight fights and while money, we're not giving eighty dollars to you people to see Andy Ruiz get knocked out five or six rounds. We're not giving any money to see no Karnacki and Wilder. We're not giving no money to see no Karnacki and, and and Ortiz for the second time, maybe after the unification belt. If you won't do that kind of crap, but man, listen. We want to see what we want to see, and that's Wilder and AJ, the two top heavyweights, fight for the crown. This could be like a three bout deal man this could be like a three bout legacy you know this could be uh, on a level of you know what 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 muhammad ali and what smoking joe frazier was you know what i'm saying eddie it could be something like ken norton and muhammad ali something like that it could be one of those rivalries like holyfield and lennox lewis was you see what i'm saying it could turn out to be this generation of boxing's holyfield slash um Lennox Lewis, you know what I'm saying? Those, those those really good fights that was going on or uh, Britic Bo versus uh uh Lennox uh, of Holyfield or something like that, man. You know, it could be something like that going on, man. What do you think about that, bro? Yeah, that, that's what that's exactly what I want to see. <laughs> see. That's what I pay my money for, something like that. I know nobody getting punched on and shit and then getting knocked out. <laughs> and no no competition at all. I don't want, I'm not paying no money to see that shit, man. Well, that's 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 my opinion on it, man, and we're gonna stick to it. But that's gonna do it, man, on today's show. We like to thank y'all for joining us on Ring Kings Boxing, man. Uh, as usual, Two Mean Johnson in the building, man, showing love, man. Two Mean, this hopefully people can get it uh, in their heads, man, and, and do this and not just give eighty dollars away on pay per view. Or wherever it is, or pay the zone, or whatever. I don't know how it is. I think it's like nine to ten dollars if you're watching them on the zone. But uh, this, this, I don't. This not no. None of these fights are worth pay per view. Maybe the the Wilder versus Ortiz fight will probably be pay per view. But none of these other fights ain't worth pay per view. You might as well put them on on ESPN or something like that. I don't see. You know, you. I can't even see how the how these handlers. Even set, Deontay Wilder, I don't know, man. I don't know if he a smart businessman or not, man. He kind of, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I, I can't understand why you think that you would make money fighting Luis Ortiz, who has no belt, and Kanaki, who has no belt. You know, and think about making money when you can fight AJ. And when you fight, you ain't just fighting him. You are gonna have a rematch clause in there if you lose. This can turn out to be a trilogy. You know how much money you're going to rake in if you fight AJ and you run around here talking about, oh, it's a good idea to fight Kanaki. It's a good idea to fight Luis Ortiz, who you already beat, knocked out. I mean, dude, are you crazy? 
I mean, I'm really starting to question Deontay Wilder's business acumen, man. Really, for real. I mean, this man has like 40-something fights, and now all of a sudden, the last several fights, the last two or three fights, now you got a little taste of money. Like, oh yeah, let's let's let's. I'm, I'm thinking about my family and all this. If you ain't rich by now, partner, you might as well hang it up, man. You in your 30s, man? Come on, man. it's just sucker shit, man. But anyway, that's gonna do it for Rain King's box. We like to thank y'all for joining us. This is explicit show. We curse a lot, if, as you already heard. But uh, that's our talk. That's our thoughts on it. And if these fighters or teams don't like us, y'all know where y'all can reach us at. But once again, we'll be back later with all the latest boxing shows. Me and to me, peace. Peace. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artist. <laughs>